Good morning, you beautiful souls. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to your morning messages with me, Michelle. Uh, this morning, we are just going to do a quick little card pull. We're going to do a page pull from my favorite book, Journey to the Heart by Melody Beattie. I am preparing and cleansing my space. I do this every time with Palo Santo. Archangel Michael, Archangel Metatron, Pete, please open sacred space. Clear any energy that does not belong here, only the whitest light around us. Please bring us the messages that we all need to hear and my viewers need to hear. We got a full moon coming up, people. This reading is going to be all about that. All right, be right back. So on February 1st, I don't know about you guys, but um, our bodies, my body, and a lot of my clients, they tend to be highly affected by full moons. If you think about our bodies, they're made up of 75% water. Depending on how much body fat you have, that can change. So the less body fat you have, the more water you have. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears> throat> throat chakra. <laughs> Maybe I was wrong with saying what I just said. I'm going to have to check my facts and, or, or rewind back and see if I said that right. But we're made up of water and the moon affects the tide. The tide is the water. So when we are feeling the full moon, it's like a rush of waves in our body. And we're feeling this go, go, go energy, or I should be doing more or this like excited feeling in our body, but our mind wants to label it as something bad is coming. And I use this analogy all the time with my students and with the kids I counsel through anxiety because anxiety really shouldn't be called anxiety. It's just your soul talking to you. Your soul is speaking to you and it's saying, Hey, you should probably start that project or, Hey, you probably shouldn't eat that food or, Hey, you should go in this direction or, Hey, you should leave this place. So our body is always talking to us, but our mind labels it as something bad is happening to us. So we have to decipher the language. And with full moons, sometimes we have to decipher that this feeling is just here. It's biological. We are, are made up of water and we're feeling the shift of the energy on the planet. So if you're feeling it this week, just let it be here. Don't attach to it. Don't like sit here and, and panic and say something bad going to happen. Why am I feeling this way? Just say, oh, full moon's coming. Okay, I'm just going to roll with it. I'm just going to go maybe sleep, take a bath, maybe go shopping, just kind of distract yourself from the feeling. Um, so don't attach too much to it. But anxiety in general, I should probably do a whole video on anxiety. I might do that later because I feel really called right now to talk about it, but I want to do cards. Um, it really is just your soul trying to speak to you to get you to do something to better your life and your experience. So maybe we will get a page today about that. Let's see. All right, universe, what message do you have for us today? Stay connected to yourself. September 4th. Here we go. Um, the woman was describing her reaction to an area she had visited, a place poisoned by toxic chemicals, a piece of earth maimed and harmed by humankind. It's not that I didn't feel connected there, she said thoughtfully. I felt connected, but feeling connected meant feeling connected to pain. The woman was describing more than a piece of land. She was describing a place of many of us visit at times on our journey. We feel connected, but we're connected to pain and sadness. We may be re reacting to an incident from our past or to something taking place right now. We don't have to run anymore. We don't have to hide. We don't have to leave our bodies or wonder what's wrong. <laughs> That's so perfect. We don't have to wonder what's wrong. We sim simply need to feel what's there, even if it hurts for a bit. Sometimes we're healing from toxic beliefs, feelings, and attitudes we've accumulated. Sometimes there's a message, a lesson to learn, an action to take that will follow naturally if we're connected. Open up to your connection. The price of being connected may mean that we occasionally feel pain, but the reward for staying connected will be consciousness, guided action, and an open heart. So good. So also anxiety 
is like you're staying connected to what your body's trying to tell you. So you might have anxiety one morning and you might have this thought, like I should call out of work. My anxiety is so bad. I need to call out of work. Well, yeah, because your body is telling you, Hey, we want you to go lay on the couch all day long. So you can feel your grief of the loved one that just passed away. And sometimes we don't know that we need the healing until we're like three hours into that day off and we're crying and we're missing our loved one. We're going through photos on our phone and we're like, this is why I took off of work today. It wasn't my anxiety. It was my soul using that communication tool of anxiety in my body to get me to feel the pain. And some people don't ever want to feel the pain. So when they have that anxiety, they just keep powering through. They don't listen to it. They numb with caffeine. They numb with alcohol. They numb with drugs. They numb with partnerships and sex and porn and gambling. And they just keep distracting from what they need to be doing, which is sitting on the couch and crying it out. I am 99% done my ebook about grief. It's called Navigating Grief and the Unknown. It is so good. My editor just sent me a bunch of emails last night. She's telling me, all the pages that she loved. And obviously she's so incredible. And she, Amanda, thank you so much for editing. You're wonderful if you're watching. Um, and I'm so excited. I'm spending the whole day today, just like kind of like in my little cocoon in my apartment. And I'm just going to go to town and fix all the edits and just really get this out there because I think people need to know what to expect with grief and with pain and how to sit with it and how to feel it. So today's message seems to be when you're feeling your fear, when you're feeling your anxiety, just let it be here and let it talk to you. Ask your body, all right, I hear you talking to me. <laughs> you're giving me crazy anxiety. Is it the full moon? Is it something I ate? Is it this grief that needs to be surfaced and it needs to be felt? And if it's that, you can also ask to be guided to a mentor or a healer, somebody that can help you facilitate that healing. We can't always do it alone. Sometimes we need somebody to sit there and just rub our back as we're crying and say, yep, I'm here. I got you. Keep going. Let that shit out. We need that every once in a while. I know I feel so called to help people in that way. Like I just want to be the person that rubs their back. <laughs> and I'm actually starting Reiki this week. My Reiki table arrives. I'm so pumped to start bringing in clients. And essentially that's what I'll be doing. I'll be guiding them through a Reiki healing session and pouring the light into their body as they meditate and emotions are going to surface in these, in these sessions. So I cannot wait to help so many people just release and feel the pain and, and be there to say, I got you. I see you. Your pain is valid. I will hold you through this. So I'm really excited about that. Okay, so moving on with these messages before I always talk for like 30 minutes, <laughs> we're strictly just going to use my animal deck today. And I also want to let you guys know, whoever's watching, if you don't already know this, I do a 12 month spread with this deck, with the animal deck. And I, I put the spread in a clock format and it's an animal for each month and it's awesome. So each month you pull out your animal like this month or February coming up, I just was posting on my Instagram about it. I have the dolphin card and the dolphin card, you read the description, it helps you have an intention for that next month. And it's crazy how much the cards are spot on with what's coming or what you experience. Um, this last month for me, I'm trying to think what it was. I believe it was the cheetah. And it's all about doing your purpose. And guess what your girl did? I literally started my YouTube channel in January. So this is me doing my purpose. And I didn't know on December 30th, 31st, that I would be doing this. I just woke up on January 1 and had no like New Year's resolution or anything. I just started doing this. And my animal card was the cheetah, which is all about taking action and doing your purpose. So the animals are spot on. So you'll get an animal for every month of, of 2022. And it's, um, the cost is $20 and 22 cents, which is in honor of the year. And you can Venmo me at magic Michelle, and I will pull cards for you. I'll pull your whole spread. I will send it to you. And then I'll send you the full descriptions of every animal that you got. And then you have full access to me all year long to ask me questions about each animal each month. 
Okay. Let's see what other cards come out. So we have the fire ants. We have the crocodile. I'll show them to you guys in a second. So we're going to do past, present, and future. So the past is the fire ant. Present is the crocodile. I forgot to mention that before I started shuffling. And the phoenix is the future. Sorry if you guys can hear that. My neighbors upstairs, I don't know what they're doing. It sounds like they're like rolling something on the floor. They don't have carpet, but maybe they're vacuuming. I'm not sure. Okay. So we have the fire ant. This is the past. No longer stewing on a situation from the past. It's time to let it go. It's time to forgive it. The fire ant is all about somebody is like, they're so fixated on something fiery and hot and not good that happened in the past, like a situation that just pissed you off. So this is your past. It's time to move out of it. Don't sit there and stew on it. Then we have the crocodile, which is funny because in the book, the crocodile talks about cooling off. So this is you all fired up. Now you're in a cooling off phase. So even the fire ant could mean that 2021 was such like a crazy high intensity, like just period in our lives. And January right now, moving into February is like a cooling off. It's like, it's a lull. You're not being called to do anything. You're just resting. You're just submerged under the water and you're waiting for your next moves. You might be in between two jobs right now. You might be wanting to leave your job, but not sure what, what the next step will be. You might be in that job feeling this heat and feeling that like, like you're a pressure cooker, <laughs> like you're in a pressure cooker and you need to take action. Or maybe you're in a relationship that you know you need to leave and it's really tough. You're resting right now and you're waiting for the right time. When you're resting like this, guess what's happening? The universe is moving things for you. It's saying, I got you. You just chill in the water. I will move people, places, and things, and I will bring you to your desires. Everything will be okay. And the crocodile is smart. He knows how to like conceal himself. He knows how, how much to come above the water to see what's going on. <laughs> Just really wicked smart. And then you guys know the Phoenix. Phoenix rises from the ashes. It's a badass. It's like, F this. I'm going after everything I want. I'm risking everything because I am worthy of this freaking awesome life. Look at that fiery passion. So we go from this, look at this little itty bitty orange and yellow to that. That's going to be the change from 2021 to 2022. You are turning into this. It's literally reversed. See the colors, how they reverse you are turning into a completely different human. It's a rebirth. You are rising from the ashes of this shitty situation and you are going to be so powerful and strong and new and you're going to be surrounded by different people and money's going to pour in. So that's your past, present, future. Let's do um, people in partnerships. What do people in partnerships need to know? Thank you. <laughs> we got the divine masculine card and we have the fish. Oh man. Our divine masculines are fish out of water. <laughs> They're like, fuck, what am I doing with my life? Somebody help me. Somebody help me. They're stressed. They're worried. Um, they feel like a fish out of water and that's okay. If you're a divine masculine in that energy, you don't have to be a guy to be divine masculine. You are just feeling maybe connected when I say that word. Um, but it's okay. You need to ground yourself. You need to go out in nature. You need to eat healthy food um, and trust that you'll be guided to the right decision when the time is right. It's almost like you're the crocodile right now and you keep flopping around in the water and you need to be more like the crocodile. You need to chill out. You need to rest. You need to know that you don't have to take action right now. But when you wake up in the morning and you feel like you're in a pressure cooker, sit there and say, okay, this is good practice. I am building my stamina. I am building my resilience. I am understanding that like I'm in control of my life. Thank you, universe. Thank you, body for showing me what a stressful situation looks like. And then I can take action to handle it in my own way. So thank you for making me a fish out of water because you're showing me what doesn't feel good. We have to experience contrast. This is a big piece 
of life and the spiritual journey is a lot of people get so frustrated when they're at jobs they don't like or when they're in relationships they don't like. But guess what? If you were never in that job, you would never crave a better job, right? If you're in a shitty job, you would never really know what a better job would look like You because you have to figure out the contrast. You have to figure out, I don't like this. This isn't working. So now let me sit down and manifest something that I do want. And that's how we find our way through life is we keep taking these like quantum leaps, one leap here, one leap there. All right, we're in a relationship that we were kind of asleep in and we were just going through the motions. And then all of a sudden it's uncomfortable. And now we're like, you know what? I deserve better. I just saw that couple over there and they seem really passionate and they're having conversation. They're like deeply connected with their eyes. And I don't have that here. Let me do my best to create that for myself first before I leave this partnership. But then if it's not, that's the contrast. The universe is saying, hey, you deserve more. It's time for you to start seeing it. Don't follow societal rules and think you need to stay because that's what we're supposed to do. And then you take the quantum leap out. And maybe you are the fish who's jumping out of the water. (laughs) But these are two totally different energies. So for people in partnership, Maybe the female is the fish out of water and she's super in her emotions and she's scattered and she's scared and the masculine comes in and he grounds her and he says, I got you, babe, you're good. Let's do this together. Let's work together. We have a mission to do. And you see there's a a moon in both uh, cards. So this maybe talks about around this uh, new moon. I think it's a dark moon. Yeah, I think it's the dark moon on February 1st, which is tomorrow. So with this uh, dark moon that's coming, maybe your passion is going to be heightened and you guys are going to finally agree to do this work together, to ground each other, to settle each other's nerves, to understand that it's not in your hands. The universe will make it happen when the time is right. Okay, let's end this reading with one final card for the divine feminines. Okay, we got two. We have the spider. And the oyster, you are building your web. This is kind of like you creating your own abundance. Look at the rainbow. The rainbow in this card is awesome. I really love this card so much because you're weaving your own web. Is that the right word, weaving? Um, You're creating creating your reality. You're understanding like, shoot, I'm magical. I can manifest. I can do whatever I want. I'm going to create this magical vibrant web that I get to live in for the rest of my life. And then the oyster is, there's a pearl in it. You're the pearl. There's this little prize. And it's all being done by you. You don't need somebody to save you. You don't need a hero. You don't need anything. You are your own hero. I got a cute little dish in my bathroom from one of my graduates years ago. Beautiful girl. She's so sweet. And she, her name is Courtney. And she just literally gave me this one day and I've had it ever since I've never gotten rid of it. And it said she needed a hero. So she became one. So that's what I feel like the oyster is like, you are creating your own life and it is going to be this beautiful pearl of an existence. If that makes sense, like every aspect of your life is going to be exactly how you want it to be. You're going to have the freedom to go see sunrises and sunsets when you want to, you're going to have freedom with money. You're going to have freedom with your, with your passion and sharing your gifts. And you can cheer yourself on because you created that yourself. You figured it out. You studied, you did the work, you did the inner work. Cause I also see this as doing that inner work and then it spreads out <clears throat> And it grows and it expands, which is soul expansion. Again, with the Phoenix, your future, you're rising from the ashes and you're creating the life of your dreams. Awesome morning read today. And your anxiety is your beacon. So when you're trying to create the life of your dreams, you have to use those anxiety filled moments to be your guide. It's your GPS, you know? How do we create this? How do we make this happen? Okay, we have to be in the contrast. We have to be in relationships that are uncomfortable so that we take action to leave. And then we have to see, okay, if I'm at a job I don't like, this is what I want you guys to do before I leave you. If you're somewhere that you think is the contrast and you're being guided to leave it, this is what I want you to do. Make a list 
of all the things you don't like about it, okay? And then make a list about what you would want to change. How would you want that to change? You know, say you're working a job and it's a nine to five. Say, I am no longer interested in working a nine to five job. I do not want to be tied to a schedule. And then your second list will be, my dream job would be to wake up whenever I want to create abundance, doing little bits of work each day, maybe a couple hours of work, making passive income. So you write down what's not working. You write down what you want. And then you write in the middle, how can you take action to to make that quantum leap? And for a partner, it could be, this is what's happening in my partnership, which is making me very uncomfortable and I don't enjoy it anymore. You know, there's zero conversation. There's no connection. There's no growth. I am stuck. I'm not working out. And then you write down your dream partnership. I am doing my own self-care routine, whether I'm dating somebody or not. My partner cheers me on and doesn't tell me I need to do my self-care routine, but just cheers me on when I'm doing it and wants the best for me. My partner asks me how I'm doing. My partner always wants to surprise me with things. And you just map out your dream partnership and also say how you're going to feel too, because it's not always just about receiving, it's about giving as well. And then in the middle list, you're writing down how you can take action to get from here to here. All right. Awesome. Awesome morning messages. I don't know what I'm going to call this one. Hmm. Quantum leaps. No, (laughs) I got to come up with a catchy one. So it draws people in because this was a good one. All right, loveys. I will see you tomorrow morning for our next messages. And I'll probably post a video about anxiety later today. So be on, be on the lookout for that. I'll probably link it below too. All right. I will see you in the next one. Bye loveys.